Hey folks, it's Steve with Prima Coffee here. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Cafelot Robot Manual Espresso Maker. This is a pretty unique way to make espresso. It's got a very novel um, configuration with the basket and piston, um, and it is truly a, a really nice and well-made manual espresso maker. It's like every bit uh, as quality as some of your higher-end home machines might be. Um, of course, as a manual espresso maker, it is non-electric, uh, and you need to provide a source of hot water. You also need to obviously you know, have a grinder. You can't see milk with it, unfortunately, but if you're an espresso enthusiast, this is a really excellent home machine for you. It's not super travel friendly just because of the size and weight, um, but if you are the type of person that wants to make your own pelican padded foam case for it, you certainly could. <laughs> um, overall, really excellent uh, home machine, um, and I'm going to dive right in and show you how to make espresso with this. So we have this all metal uh, body here. We have a steel portafilter. I'm actually going to raise the arms up here to remove this portafilter and basket. Um, again, it has this novel system where you'll see right now the piston actually extrudes kind of beyond the body. Um, and the portafilter itself is quite deep. You actually have this very deep um, custom basket made for it. It's a 57.5 millimeter diameter basket, but it holds, uh, overall, it holds about 150 milliliters of, uh, of water. Um, and part of that, of course, is also taken up by coffee. So the way that you load this is pretty interesting. Um, inside, you have this little steel dispersion screen. Of course, you have this very deep basket and you'll put your coffee in, you will tamp it, put the screen on top, and then put your water on top of the screen. Uh, you also have some optional paper filters that come uh, with the device. You can actually put that on top of your puck. Um, that actually leads to some interesting things with shot pulling that I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but overall, uh, the, the method of loading this is pretty simple and straightforward, if a bit unique. So once you have your water in there, you can load it into your portafilter. And the port filter actually has these removable spouts. So these just pull right off. There's a silicone O-ring seal. I'm actually gonna leave these off while I pull my shot. Um, and you can, you can place this wherever you like. So if you need to twist it uh, to align with the cups that you have, you can do that. Or for me, I'm just gonna actually pull it bottomless. Once I have all my coffee and water in here, I'm gonna load it up. And to do that, I wanna raise the arm. So that's just to pull the piston up, uh, up top. It makes it easier to load in. Um, I have two little lugs front and back. I want them to be more or less uh, straight out uh, 12 and six o'clock uh, relative to the robot. And then I can just lock in either left or right actually. It doesn't matter. Um, once I'm locked in, I can lower the, the piston. And then if I have water in there, I can start my extraction. So again, it's a bit of a different way to pull espresso. Most espresso makers are not having you load both coffee and water into the basket like this, but overall the, the fundamental you know, physics of actually extracting are the same. Once you start pushing the piston down, you are applying pressure on top of that water and you can extract up to nine bar shots or even more, depending on how finely you've ground your coffee. Uh, actually for me, I prefer to pull a little bit less, more like seven to eight bars of pressure. Um, but that is mostly a, a personal preference thing. Um, on the barista model, you'll see here I have that pressure gauge. Um, the standard model does not have that. You can get a feel for the proper pressure to pull shots, and really there's a lot of wiggle room there. Um, once you get a feel for how much pressure might be involved, um, you don't necessarily need a visual feedback mechanism. You can have that sort of tactile feedback of how much the arms are sort of resisting your, your force. Um, it takes a little bit of a feel, takes a bit of getting used to, but you can still dial in coffees and pull excellent shots even without that pressure gauge. So depending on you know, how much of an actual metric you want to have, the gauge isn't really necessary. It is perhaps nice to have in terms of consistency and understanding how your shots are extracting. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this up and pull a shot for you. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice, uh, of course, is we have these two legs 
um, that make it a little bit tough to put most espresso scales underneath. Um, an Akaya Lunar will fit, but you have to put it at an angle, uh, which is okay if you're pulling just into one cup or one demitasse. If you have two cups, unfortunately, it's not going to fit. Um, the Pixis, the newest Akaya scale, the smallest one, should fit in between the two legs, but it may not be able to hold both uh, or two demitasses or two cups underneath, unfortunately. So you might have a little bit of a, a trouble finding the right scale if you prefer to use one. Um, for me, the Lunar is going to work just fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pull out my basket. Um, and I'm going to measure, I've ground 18 grams of coffee. It's ground a little bit finer than I might grind for a home machine that's pulling just nine bars or even with a little bit of pre-infusion. And that's because um, lever machines can take a little bit of a finer grind just because of the way that they handle pressure. As you're pushing down, you have a slower ramp up in pressure. And of course, you can manually adjust on the fly how much pressure you're applying. So you can have shots that run 60 seconds and taste great because you've pulled them at a lower, uh, lower pressure and ramped up a little bit more slowly. Um, so I'm going to add my 18 grams of coffee here. The basket will hold about 25 grams as a max in our experience. Um, it is, it's a little uh, tight if you get up uh, that much, but you can make it happen. And really the limit is how much water you can add appropriate to the amount of coffee that you're using. Um, again, it holds about 150 milliliters total. And that includes, you know, the space taken up by the coffee, the, dis the distribution screen, and the paper filter if you choose to use it. Now they include this uh, handy tamper. Um, as a slightly off size of basket at 57.5 millimeters, um, you might have a hard time finding a compatible tamper. A 57 millimeter tamper will do the job uh, if you prefer to have one. Of course, the, the handle on this is a little bit small. Um, I actually prefer to thumb tamp. And um, checking that your level is not as necessary as it is in some other baskets. Um, we think that that's partly just because you have that nice big water cushion on top. Um, and the extraction is handled a little bit differently anyway. But um, overall, just still try to compress firmly um, as level as possible. I'm going to take my distribution screen and place that on top. And then I have some hot water ready here. For an 18 gram dose, if I'm pulling about one to two, I'm going to add 60 grams of uh, water here. Uh, the coffee is going to absorb some water, and uh, I also need to make sure that I have about 36 to 40 grams total for my yield. So that also takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of practice and understanding how much water it takes um, to pull the shot to the yield that you prefer. Um, but you can, you know, obviously kind of go back and forth. You can add too much water and just stop the shot, you know, and pull your cup when you are ready. Um, so finding the right amount of water to use isn't totally necessary. Uh, I'm going to add my cup here and tear that out. And then I'm going to add my portafilter. So again, just to lock on, I want my lugs at 6 and 12 o'clock. And I'm going to lock it in to the right. Add my cup. And then I'm going to start a timer because I'm just immediately going to apply a little bit of pressure. And you'll see on my gauge, you know, my pressure is going to start to build. Um, I don't totally have a feel for what nine bars feels like. So with the gauge facing away from me, I'm, I'm going to have a, a little bit of a tough time probably nailing the perfect pressure. But um, you will feel a pretty good bit of resistance. Nine bars is actually kind of strenuous to maintain. Um, it helps to stand directly over the robot. And, you know, so you can apply more of your sort of posture into the arms. Um, but anywhere between six and eight really is fine for uh, an extraction. And lever shots, as I said, they can take a little bit longer. They can go, you know, even up to a minute or more and uh, still be good extractions. So I'm going to stop this right at 40. I'll have some drips that fall onto my little silicone pad here. Um, and I'm going to taste this. Um, that shot ran, looks like, uh, around 50 seconds. Mm, it's lovely. It's, it's got great body. It's got good sweetness to it. I took a moment to dial in um, just a couple of shots before we started shooting. Um, and overall, I think what we love about the robot is that as a lever machine, it actually is somewhat forgiving in terms of how you apply pressure and pull shots. Um, you can get some pretty good, if not 
perfect, you know, rather not quite perfect, but pretty good extractions um, without too much, you know, fiddling and guesswork. Um, as long as you're getting an appropriate um, ratio for the coffees that you're using uh, and, you know, you're pulling coffees that you like to uh, shot profiles that you tend to enjoy. So if you prefer a stronger shot, you know, and you're pulling one to one in terms of ratio, um, you don't really have to worry so much about perfect pressure or perfect time because just the way that lever machines kind of pad out um, how picky some coffees can be. Um, I could probably dial in the shot a little bit more and play with my pressure a little bit more and get some better flavor profile to it. Right now, I, I actually quite like this. It's good body, good sweetness. Um, the flavors aren't perhaps uh, quite as clear as I would like them, and that was probably what I would dial in for, is getting a little bit more of the berry that's in this coffee, pulling that out a little bit more. And I can do that because I can manually control my pressure on the fly. I can watch the time on my scale. I can watch the pressure on my gauge. I can change how I pull these shots um, and get really good results. So that is the Cafe Lot Robot. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you wanna see more content like this, please like and subscribe. We post videos about product overviews and comparisons and all sorts of educational content. And as always, if you wanna see more, please come visit us at primacoffee.com. Catch you next time.